this is Wellness Buds, and I'm your host, Stella Wingfield. And I'm Laura. This episode is inspired by the following quote. The two most powerful warriors are patience and time. So remember, great achievements take time. There is no overnight success. Leo Tolstoy. If you haven't already, I suggest listening to part one of this episode, as it will make more sense. We're just going to dive right back in. (laughs) Say it, girl. (laughs) You know... I think, (laughs) I do think also, like, as you get older and you mature and you're more comfortable with yourself, a lot more can be opened and, like, explored. And I think sometimes that can be really hard if it didn't start that way with a partner. And, you know, I was in a long relationship. (laughs) It started when we were both young and it wasn't really like that, but I don't remember being like dissatisfied, but I do see it being better after. How do you mean? <laughs> like throughout the relationship? Just like there's, there's actual communication. And, no, I mean with like, oh, like now, because you're like, I didn't have that communication before, but now I have it because. <laughs> Yes, and I'm not trying to shame one specific person because we're both guilty in the lack of communication and, like, not doing something Mm -hmm. more and, you know. And that's totally not – that's on both of us. And I think we were just really young and then it was like, well, this is our norm. like, fall into patterns pretty easily with one person. And when it's been going on for so long, too, I feel like it's harder to be like, um, actually, I want this – Without making them feel bad, like, wait, why didn't you say this sooner? You feel, like, in a weird position to bring it up after so many years. Exactly. And it's just, like, it is interesting because getting out of that in my mid-20s definitely led to a different path Yeah, Life is so funny like that. You learn what you like, what you don't like, but yes. what works, what doesn't. Not trying to judge anyone, though. Well, yeah. Just, if you're in a long-term relationship, maybe talk about if y'all want to try other things, because that can be a weird conversation to bring up sometimes. Yeah. But I feel like at the same time, when you've been with someone for so long, it's like, not that weird to be like, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, maybe it would be fun to try something new. Exactly. And it's not that weird. I just think it's often not said. Yeah. Because they think it's going to insinuate that they're not happy with how it is. Oh, my God. Do you know what's the funniest shit ever? What? So, you know, I think Josh and I were together at like for like three or four years at this point. Maybe closer to four. And um, he decided to get me a toy to like compliment our sexual endeavors. And when he got it, I got so mad at him. I was like, bitch, are you not happy? What don't you like about this? I thought you liked all of that work that you do. Like, you tell me that you like doing that. Like, are you like, I just thought he wasn't happy with our sexual experience that he felt the need to get this. And he's like, I just want to add to your pleasure, Stella. And I'm like, I remember being so pissed for like two weeks and then we tried it. And I'm like, oh, this is fun and different. Like. And then, you know, in retrospect, I'm like, I'm really sorry that I got so mad at you for that. I just thought, like, you weren't happy with what I was bringing to the table or, like, you know, I just thought there was something wrong with me that you felt the need to, like, go and get this when it's like, uh, it wasn't about that at all. It was just my own insecurities bringing that perspective and assuming that that's why he got it when really he was just like, this is a fun surprise and, like, a fun new thing to try in bed. But see, and that's the thing. I think a lot of partners think that's going to be the reaction. You know, maybe he could have eased into it by instead of being like, surprise, here's a toy, bringing up toys first. Yeah, I think he had talked you know, about it before, but I was just like, we don't need it. No. Like, I'm good here. <laughs> like, everything is good. I'm finally comfortable with this because it was, I just, it's crazy how far I have come in our relationship Pun intended, Uh haha. But like, honestly, and I might cut this out of this episode, this could just be between you and me, but like when we first started 
whatever, and he, like, was very much so interested in my pleasure, I wouldn't even let him touch my skin directly. I made him do it through my underwear because I was, like, so uncomfortable with the thought of someone else touching me there. I'm, like, I've literally had, have, I have or had (laughs) mental issues that I, like, need to, like, get through (laughs) sexually and, like, being comfortable with myself and being comfortable with another person enough to, like, Mm -hmm. let my guard down and, like, get to that vulnerable state like we were talking about earlier. So it's just, like, everyone is in a different spot and they need to be met where they're at. So it's, like, going from that from the beginning, though, to, like, you know, then he wants to introduce something new and I'm, like, uh, what? (laughs) You know? Yeah, you're like, uh, I'm just letting you. Yeah, like several years in. I'm still just getting comfortable. But, you know, like I was just very comfortable with what was happening. So bringing in something new, I'm just like, um, what? (laughs) Yeah. It is hard. Yeah, it is hard. Especially, like we've said, we've been conditioned and it's been normalized to keep our thoughts internal and even just like not even knowing that no is an option sometimes like then bringing up like whole other realm of possibilities with communication is just like foreign territory it really is you know the sexcapades be real i'm glad for you and your sexcapades and open communication to get what you want i'm trying yeah it is not without weirdness sometimes but in a good way yeah i mean new partners in general it's just like the first time is always kind of a little awkward because, like, you don't know that person yet at all. <laughs> yes. You don't know their body yet. You don't know what they like yet. You don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. So you're like, uh. I know. Someone took their shirt off and they had abs. And I was like, you know, I'm going to be real. I don't really like people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, like them as a people. <laughs> yeah, like. To be honest, when it comes to dating, I'm going to say, if you have abs, you, like, won't eat pizza. And, like, it's not that I want pizza every day, but I also want to be able to eat pizza when I want. And not feel any kind of way about it. Yeah, and I want you to, like, participate in it. And, like, you did not participate in eating pizza if you have abs. (laughs) It's a whole other conversation. (laughs) I literally... (laughs) He took his shirt off and I was like, huh... I really wouldn't have gone for you had I known. (laughs) Like, we can do this, but we might not be able to socialize if you can't enjoy the pleasures of life. Pizza. Yeah. I should test him and invite him to be. I would fail the test, though, because I'm that bitch who's like, unless it's a special occasion or, you know, like, every now and then I'll have it when I, like, really want it. But it's usually just the frozen variety that I can have, like, more control over. Yeah knowing what's in it and whatever but i am that bitch yeah josh hates me for it (laughs) i can't date that bitch i'm sorry i love you (laughs) but he gets so mad because i'm like you can eat pizza and i can eat a salad like what's wrong with that abs are red flags (laughs) for me (laughs) i'm communicating but i don't like that (laughs) A deal breaker. Should have been in our deal breaker yeah. episode. I like general fitness. Yeah. But yeah, that's my most recent development in sex. <laughs> but you enjoy the actual oh. abs, like, in the moment, right? Yeah, I enjoy the work they're capable of, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> I'm like, I definitely don't mind that, but... My booty call can have abs, but we can't anyone I eat dinner with can. <laughs> Oh my god. I don't think I've ever said any of that out loud, but I've always felt that way about abs. That's so funny. Oh. Um, Was there anything else, like, on the principles of pleasure that you wanted to talk about specifically? No. I feel like we got a lot of it. Or the non-goal-oriented touch. Yeah. I don't know that we really got there. Yeah, we didn't get there. There were a few things we didn't talk about that I thought were interesting. We didn't come. (laughs) We didn't get there. I thought that that part was very interesting, though. The non-goal-oriented touch. 
Because I yes. feel like when it isn't goal oriented, it more often leads to what their a big what goal. their goal is anyway. I agree because it's just like so sensual and being touched in ways that like obviously your partner rubs your back, but like and like if you want it to last longer, non goal oriented. Yeah, because I mean foreplay when like not aggressive let's also put that for the same reason that once it get, starts getting super physical we're like all right 15 minutes because <laughs> she doesn't want that much yeah uh but like foreplay can get a lot done and can last longer yep believe me i know <laughs> the foreplay is the longest part exactly and the best That's part how you enjoy in my it opinion. but yeah yeah I feel like that's a good exercise to try for just like trying something new to just feeling each other's bodies in like a not necessarily sexual way, but just in a loving kind of way. Mm -hmm. I also thought that the mirror exercise was like so on point with our get comfortable with your body. Yeah, and our episode on the 10 things we love about ourselves of like looking in the mirror and finding things that you like. But I thought that their version was very interesting because they said to get as naked as possible and look in the mirror and find all the things that you like about yourself and do it every day. Because the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be with it, and the more things you'll find that you love. Great point. I never would have thought to take it to the naked level, but, like, I've been trying it a little bit and getting a little bit more comfortable. I mean, I'm, like, always... It's uncomfortable at the beginning, for yeah. sure. I'm always a bitch, though, that, like, has placed a lot of emphasis on the way that I look, so I'm very comfortable with looking at myself. But usually more in, like, I pick my shirt up to, like, see where my stomach, like, how it's looking and, like, check out the booty and, like, checking out these things, like, individually versus just, like, straight up stripping down and, like, take it all in, bitch. <laughs> like. <laughs> yes. It's a lot. Yeah. I feel like mine is day to day when I'm, like, I appreciate this moment and then I'm, like, I'm over this moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I can take two minutes to do the full blown, like, here it all is, that what that it is what it is, but I don't need to be looking, like, too extensively. It doesn't have to take up that much of my day. <laughs> yes. Or I'll find a fucking problem. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it starts with the things that you're looking to love about yourself, but then it could quickly turn to, like, oh, but what about this? Or, like... You know, it's like the little things that shouldn't bug you, but just kind of do. Yes. And they bug no one else but yeah, you. Yeah, like literally no one else in the world would notice it, but you do because you're your harshest critic as always. I also thought it was interesting in like, I think in one of the first episodes that one of the girls was saying how... She always was, like, trying to lose weight, and, like, she always associated being skinny with being happy, and I thought that was interesting, like, putting that into words like that, because I know we've talked a little bit, or a decent amount, about, like, body image and loving yourself and so much emphasis on looking a certain way, and, like, but I never really put it into that equation of, like, when I'm skinny, I'll be happy. But like that is kind of like the message of media. And it is so conditioned mm -hmm. into the way women think about themselves. So I just thought that was super interesting. And like, it obviously doesn't have to be that way. You can just like find happiness with how you are looking currently instead of being like, I hate this, this and this and I'll be happy when and it's like, no, I can enjoy this, this and this about myself. And, like, chill if I do lose weight, if that happens. But, like, I'm not going to be necessarily happier if I look a certain way. Especially if it's, like, so unattainable. So you're, like, constantly reaching for this thing that's not even possible in your body. Not everyone's made to look that way, like we've said before. But I just thought it was interesting, too. Because when you think about pleasure and, like, trying to be happy with yourself or comfortable with yourself... 
Like, it doesn't have to... It yeah. Can, it, there's no way it can look the same for everyone. So, I don't know. That little thing just stood out so much in my mind as it resonates so hard with me and my own issues. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that is, like, there is no one size fits all in, in life. Yeah. And remember that in life. In life. In sexual pleasure. In everything. Like, no one size fits all. That's why there's a million different sizes of sex toys, too. (laughs) I love that segment of the show when she was just like, all of you are famous. All you guys are going to be on TV. There's I feel like there's like 30 toys minimum on that table. And she's explaining. There's a lot. There's a lot. I learned a lot from that segment. (laughs) I'm like, I'm not really like into butt stuff and definitely not shaming anyone who is. But... That part was enlightening, like the butt plug part. I never knew, I've never really seen butt plugs, really, or to know that they need to have that little anchor so your ass doesn't eat it. Like, that shit had me dying. (laughs) They were like, if it doesn't have the the little blocker, your ass will literally eat it and you'll end up in the ER. (laughs) Let it be a lesson, y'all. If you want to go that route, get an anchor. Get an anchor. <laughs> I just love how much it makes. <laughs> well, I just never even thought, like, I didn't realize that was a thing that could happen. That your ass would just eat it. I didn't know that your ass would eat I did not know that your ass could eat butt plugs Good to know. I think that should be the quote of this entire episode. I didn't know your ass could eat butt plugs. The name of the episode. Quote. Yes. I didn't know. I really didn't. <laughs> I didn't either, but it, it just didn't sink into me as hard. I just... And now, now my mental images are real fucking wonky. Well, when she said it, all I could think about was the visual of your ass literally eating it. I'm like... The way she um, said it, I'm just, like, imagining it just, like, like sucking it all in. <laughs> yes. Uh, and yes. another thing I didn't... Okay. I thought this was, like, a very revolutionary, in all seriousness, thing on the show. That the G-spot does not exist on the inside of you. Like, there is that part that's, like, attached to the clitoris, like, on the inside... And, like, it does, Mm -hmm. but it isn't an actual G-spot, which I feel like Mm -hmm. all men are very much so convinced that that is a thing and that women can come that way. And it is not necessary. It's just not a thing, which I'm like, nope, I didn't know Josh is or was very convinced that it was. And I told him and he's like, wait, I don't think he really believes me (laughs) because he's like, But there is that spot on the inside, and it's like, well, there is that spot, but, like, it isn't what you think it is. And it doesn't necessarily lead to coming. Yeah. You still need that clitoris play. So. Gotta do it. Gotta hit it from all angles. And it's, like, great if you want to hit it from the inside, too, but, like, you still need the other stuff to go on. So, when that was happening, I was just like, oh, my God need to share all men need to know and like i was reading this article like when i was looking for the quotes on orgasm gap a lot of men surveyed for the article believe that a woman could come from the inside and it's like when that's the perception it is truly no wonder that the orgasm gap exists like if you don't even know how to make a woman come like that is the problem or Part of the problem. <laughs> there is the gap. Yeah. I think we've talked about all we can talk about, really, though, as far as this goes. So I'm going to have to go take a bath in some holy water. <laughs> <laughs> explicit content that shouldn't even be explicit, but it is for some reason. Yes. Product of the week. Product of the week. Product of the week. Pow! Pow! Uh, my favorite toy, I'm going to link it below. It is not on Amazon.